Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we'll be discussing the model of the hand its important muscles nerves and just an ospy of the hand so that you know what is what in labeling of course so let's get started and talk about the palm first we are looking into the palm so this is the palm of your hand while this is the dorsum of the hand we are talking about the palmar aspect when we discuss the palmar aspect the first thing or the most superficial thing that we will see is this structure called the palmar aponeurosis it is triangular in shape the muscle that is being inserted into the palmar aponeurosis you can see right here is the palmaris brevis muscle so always remember muscles are going to be represented in the red color so this is white this means there is some sort of fascia thickening of the fascia so this is palmar aponeurosis and the palmaris brevis when we remove the palmaris brevis we will see the first layer muscles muscles of the first layer of your hand now these were the two afs if you remember if you recall we've uh, done this before the two afs are basically the two thenar eminences muscles the, these are the abductor and the flexor pollicis and the digiti minimis all right so let's talk about the thenar first this is the abductor pollicis brevis the one that lies laterally is the opponens pollicis and just beneath this is the flexor pollicis brevis then similarly we have the abductor digiti minimi the oppon opponens digiti minimi and the flexor digiti minimi which is lying just beneath the abductor this guy right here is the flexor digiti minimi this was the first layer muscles what else do we see in this obvious layer it is the this structure is the flexor retinaculum if you remember it covers the wrist anything that is coming from the little finger we all know is medial whatever is on the thumb side is the lateral so this nerve and this artery is obviously the ulnar nerve and the ulnar artery because this is the medial side so this is the ulnar nerve this is the ulnar artery and we know that this passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum and as you can see if it's visible that means it's passing above it anything that's passing below deep to the flexor retinaculum is passing through the carpal tunnel that we've already discussed now let's talk about the muscles of the second layer this was the first layer now this is the second layer muscle these are mostly the lumbrical muscles these are four in number 1 2 3 and 4 the next is the third layer muscles the third layer muscles include the ooa muscles o which is for the two opponents the opponents pollicis the opponents digiti minimi and a for the adductor pollicis this is the main muscle adductor of the thumb now the adductor has two heads this is the transverse head because it's transverse and this is the oblique head of the adductor pollicis if you remove this we have the fourth layer these are the palmar and dorsal interosseous muscle layer interosseous muscle layer so the interosseous muscles here what you can see these are the palmar interosseous because they're visible on the palmar aspect and posteriorly we will see the dorsal interosseous on the dorsum of the hand okay so the the visible ones these over here are the palmar interosseous so these were the muscles now let's talk about the neurovascular bundle of the palm first layer in the palm what's most important and as i already told you is that from medial side will be the ulnar nerve and ulnar artery and from more lateral side you'll see the median nerve so you can see this is the median nerve it passes deep to the carpal tunnel and then it enters your palm the this is the median nerves medial and lateral divisions that you can see all right so the median and lateral divisions of the median nerve while this is the ulnar nerve now ulnar nerve when it enters the palm it first gives a dorsal branch which goes to the dorsum of the hand when the ulnar nerve enters the uh, palm it gives a superficial and a deep branch so this is the superficial branch which is lying right here you can see the superficial branch is going to supply the medial one and a half fingers with sensory supply and then the ulnar nerve gives a deep branch as you can see this is the deep branch of ulnar nerve the deep branch of ulnar nerve will supply most of the intrinsic muscles of the hand and this is the ulnar nerve which also forms an arch deeply and it ends when it reaches the adductor pollicis muscle so you can see it ends over here by supplying this muscle then we have the ulnar artery 
The ulnar artery we've already studied forms the superficial palmar arch. So this is a superficial palmar arch, which basically is being formed by the superficial branch of the ulnar artery. So just like the nerve, the ulnar artery also has a superficial branch and it gives a dorsal branch. This is a superficial branch of the ulnar artery forming the superficial palmar arch, while the deep branch of the ulnar artery, as you can see, is going here. The deep branch will basically complete the deep palmar arch. So this is the deep palmar arch, which is being completed by the deep branch of ulnar artery medially. Now uh, let's talk about this artery right here. This artery right here is the radial artery. Now the radial artery, because this is the radial or the lateral side, this is the radial artery. The radial artery, what it's gonna do is it's going to come to the lower border of the radius. Here it turns around and goes to the dorsum of the hand. But before it goes to the dorsum of the hand, it gives a superficial branch. So this is the superficial branch of radial artery. Superficial branch of radial artery is responsible for completing this superficial palmar arch laterally. Let's talk about the median nerve. This is the median nerve dividing into its lateral and medial branches. It is responsible for supplying the lateral three and a half digits along with the thenar eminence muscles and the lumbrical one and lumbrical two. So here the tendons that you can see are the tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis. And how do I get to know that? It's because if you trace them into your fingers, you'll see that these tendons are splitting into two slips. These slips get inserted into the middle phalanx, while the flexor digitorum profundus passes between these two slips and gets inserted into the distal phalanx. So these are the superficialis tendons. And this tendon you can see right here is the flexor pollicis longus tendon. And these are the fibrous flexor sheets of the fingers. That was mostly all for your palmar aspect of the hand. Now let's talk about the dorsum of the hand. The main neurovascular bundle you'll see on the dorsum of the hand will be your radial nerve and your radial artery, also some of your ulnar nerve. Overall, this is the extensor retinaculum that you see right here. This is the radial nerve. The radial nerve is responsible for supplying the lateral side of the dorsum of your hand. The ulnar nerve, this is the ulnar nerve. It is responsible for supplying the medial side of the dorsum of the hand. These are the dorsal interosseous muscles. And this is also the first dorsal interosseous muscle. This artery you can see here is the radial artery. It is coming from the front of your forearm. It wound around the border of the wrist. And here it gives one branch. You can see this branch that goes to the lateral side of your thumb to supply it. And then this branch is known as the first dorsal metacarpal artery. This dorsal metacarpal artery will give a supply to your medial side of the thumb and the lateral side of your index finger. What happens to the radial artery now when it enters the first interosseous space, it dips down and enters the palmar aspect to form the, as you can see, the radial artery enter emerges at the palmar aspect to form the deep palmar arch, which is completed medially by this deep branch of the ulnar artery. In the palm, you'll see that the radial artery will give first a princeps pollicis artery. This is the princeps pollicis artery, which is going to the thumb because it's pollicis. And then it gives a radialis indices artery that goes to supply the medial side of the index finger. And after it has given these two branches, it becomes the deep palmar arch. Back to the dorsum, you can see here the tendons of the various extensor muscles, the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. And this muscle is the extensor pollicis longus. This is the anatomical snuff box right here. You can see radial artery is a content of it. Then you'll see tendons of the extensor digitorum, extensor carpi ulnaris muscle inserting here, the extensor carpi radialis inserting right here. These are the various extensor expansions of your dorsum of the digits. That's almost all that you'll be asked on from the hand model. So we've discussed the entire hand model. I really hope you understood well. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Instagram.